drought in South Africa is a natural phenomenon. On the opposite side of the scale, we also experience periodic flooding, both of which affect the quality and quantity of our water. Human activities such as mining, agriculture and infrastructure development also impact on land degradation and scarce water resources. However, vital ecosystems such as wetlands have the ability to mitigate against extreme weather events like droughts and floods. World Wetlands Day is celebrated on the 2nd of February annually and focuses public attention on the importance of wetlands. The theme for 2017 is Wetlands for Disaster Risk Management. In Pretoria, the Agricultural Research Council teamed up with the Department of Environmental Affairs and a community group, Friends of Colburn Valley, to celebrate World Wetlands Day at the Colburn Wetlands Nature Reserve. Children and parents learnt about the importance of wetlands to biodiversity and the well-being of the human population. A wetland is an expression of water movement in the landscape. So if you think about an area where it's wet, then that is typically a wetland. It creates a habitat where wetland vegetation can establish itself, but also the soil can um, show you the signs of wetness. We have got various types of wetlands. In South Africa, we use the hydrogeomorphic um, landscape classification. And that classification basically is based on the fact that water moves through wetlands differently. So we have got the valley bottom systems, floodplains typically, where water is coming from the catchment above, flows down the river system and enters the wetland and beyond it through the system. Then we have got valley bottoms without channels, where water flows diffusely and very slowly across the whole surface of the wetland. Hill slopes, on the other hand, are wetlands where water comes out of the ground, so there's exfiltration or discharge, and then water flows down the slope, mostly in a diffused way as well, or sometimes even linked to a channel. And then obviously, we have got our depressions. In depressions, the water doesn't flow in or out, it stays in there, it's rainfall recharge, and sometimes with water flowing through the system, which is groundwater related. In a wetland, um, organic matter is accumulated. And that actually acts like sponge. So it stores water and it's under anaerobic conditions. The breakdown of organic matter doesn't happen because of a lack of oxygen. So your organic matter build up in the wetland um, provides that function, so it stores the water. That was the top one and now you've got a browner one. Wetlands and the consequent biodiversity are under constant threat in urban areas from development. Often, wetlands are drained or cleared to provide space for development. Wetlands are also affected by pollution and alien invasive infestation detrimental to the natural biodiversity. It's just amazing that we have actually got a wetland in an urban area like this in the first place. You know, so many other wetlands have been uh, completely destroyed. And as the Friends of Colburn Valley, our, our mission is really to assist with the conservation of the wetland in its current form and to try and actually improve the condition of the wetland. Um, because the wetland does contribute quite substantially to the quality of the water that's flowing through the wetland uh, out of the urban surroundings such as the Hatfield Colburn uh, area and uh, improves the water quality that eventually ends up in the Rodoplot Dam which is you know one of the drinking water sources of Pretoria. Wetlands fulfill so many functions to us as, as, as human beings. Flat attenuation, base flow maintenance, filtration from sediment to toxins, to sewage, carbon storage, we think about climate change, how important that is. 30% of all terrestrial carbon are stored in wetlands, 30%, that's more than in all forests. 10% of the water's fresh water are stored in wetlands, peatlands specifically. 
and then sense of place just look where we are today it's beautiful you hear the bird life you know so it's places that's important for us in terms of uh, biodiversity tourism uh, and so on Farmers in South Africa are becoming increasingly aware of the role of wetlands as a buffer against extreme weather events and natural disasters such as flooding and drought. Many communities rely on wetland environments for their livelihoods, providing water, food, fiber and agricultural resources. Traditionally, we've seen through the millennia that wetlands have been used for agriculture. So they've drained wetlands to improve pasture land and to increase the area where they uh, use for pasture and for crops. So agricultural activities took place on various wetland types. For instance, river floodplains where they grow crops. But nowadays, um, the focus has changed and farmers are not encouraged to drain wetlands anymore the rather um, restore them through rehabilitation and keep them as a water source in the landscape. Erosion on wetlands needs to be stopped and a gabion structure is a typical rehabilitation structure. The gabion is actually uh, decreasing the water velocity and it also encouraging water to back flood so that it is able to flood the wetland, encourage uh, wetland vegetation and farmers are encouraged to rehabilitate their wetlands on their properties. It's important for farmers to look after wetlands because during high rainy season they absorb water and during drought they recharge and discharge water which can be used by farmers for their crops and for their animals. It also assists um, uh, stock farmers and game farmers with the vegetation for their animals. The wetlands are very cool. They are very cool. For instance, there's a lot of success stories where degraded wetlands have been rehabilitated and during the drought period those farmers had water, whereas their neighbours who did not rehabilitate their wetlands did not have the water resource. Wetlands provide important ecosystem services, for example, the retention of soil, regulating levels of greenhouse gases through the storage of carbon as undecomposed plant material and the provision of clean water. And we've seen in the past 15 years a huge increase in awareness that's been raised in terms of, of, of wetlands and importance. By being out in nature and experiencing it firsthand, people learn to care and understand the value of wetlands. It um, gets the water back. Being so close to uh, the surrounding community, to bring young children and uh, young people in here to experience nature at first hand and to see the beauty of nature in all forms, uh, be it plant life, be it uh, birds, insect life, even small mammals which, which occur here. So the Friends Group has really been able to network with local government, provincial government and national government institutions. And now they've pulled in the ARC, Agricultural Research Council, who's helping with this awareness with the World Research Commission. And I think this is a good example of a Friends Group that has been able to sustain itself uh, networking with other departments on all three levels, NGOs, children, then this day to day we have 200 people plus here it really does so well um, to establish a place. So partnerships are incredibly important.